the price of eggs is getting crazy. It's so crazy that people have never wanted backyard chickens more. And they're buying the breeds that lay the most eggs and causing a shortage of those breeds nationwide. And Jacques and I, we've been keeping chickens for about a couple years each. Yep. And we're not experts, but we've made some trials, we've made some tribulations, we've made some errors. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of the most common questions and considerations when you're keeping backyard chickens. Before you begin down the path of keeping chickens, you need to figure out if you're actually allowed to do it. Believe it or not, some cities prohibit it, or they sort of gatekeep it with very specific recommendations. And some of those recommendations or regulations might involve how many chickens you're allowed to have, whether or not you're allowed to have a rooster, and exactly where your coop has to be placed in your property. Yeah, the last thing you wanna do is build a nice coop and realize you have too many hens or your neighbor reports it and it should be 10 feet away and not six feet away. So a lot of things to consider, but once you do have that nailed down, it's time to talk coops. When it comes to the coop, the home for your hens, it can be quite overwhelming. Now, whether you're buying or DIYing, there are some important considerations. What I'll say is if you're buying on the lower end, you're gonna miss out on some predator proofing features and they tend to be on a small side. So you need to make sure you're putting the right amount of hens in that coop. Now the Carolina coop, ranges up to $10,000. So it's certainly pricey, but it's also completely predator proof. DIYing is a fantastic option, and that is what Jacques done at his coop. In order to build this DIY coop for under $500, we spent quite a lot of time salvaging, reclaiming, and collecting any free wood that we could find. You could see that our clean out doors are actually made out of a kitchen cabinet door. And all of this is actually reclaimed from various projects that we found on Craigslist. So we just started collecting from the very beginning. The other thing is that the whole entire coop itself is actually sitting on a pallet. Now, there are some very important considerations that we figured out while building this DIY coop. And the first one is that when you have your coop, make sure you don't just put it on the ground. You wanna leave a little empty space like this, which provides the chickens more square footage to roam around in. It also gives them somewhere safe to protect them from the weather. But now let's go take a look inside to show you one of the most crucial details. Now that we have the coop clean outdoors open, you can actually see this piece of wood right here. And that is the roost bar. That's where they sleep every single night. You could tell that it's actually quite high up from the base of the coop. That's because we are using the deep litter method here. And I'm using all these hemp pieces here to help soak up their poop and urine overnight. And what it does is it actually keeps the smell very low because this will soak up any moisture and it'll actually compost in place, leading to a very tidy chicken coop. When it comes to either buying or building your own chicken coop, the number one thing that bothers me more than anything is when I see this. This is the poorly named chicken wire. This is something that could easily be broken apart by something like a raccoon. It actually just doesn't last for a very long time. What you wanna use for any part of your coop that's considered a protective barrier is hardware cloth. And this is half inch hardware cloth. This will stop mice, rats, rodents, anything from actually ripping this apart. It will last a longer time and it's going to make sure that your chickens stay safe. When planning a chicken coop, space is one of the most important considerations. 10 square feet per hen is a good rule of thumb. If you start getting under that, you'll get into some bullying behavior by the hens and you also have a bit of a problem with disease. How much space does a chicken really need? Well, in terms of the roost bar space, they need about one foot per chicken. So if this is two feet, that could support two chickens in the nighttime. But when it comes to the actual internals of the coop, they need about three to five square feet. So this is a four by six coop, meaning it's a total of 24 square feet, and that can support about five to eight chickens. But there is one more important factor. If you give your chickens plenty of outdoor space like I have done here with this chicken orchard, they will actually be happier, even if you have a little bit more than you should. But the only annoying thing I have to deal with right now is that I have to close this door and open it every single morning and night. To make life a little bit easier, I've installed an automatic chicken door that closes either on a timer or with the sun. So my hens can come out into my outdoor run area, which gives them a little bit of extra space. And I don't have to worry so much about letting them in and out because at the end of the day, when they go up to roost, this will close about 30 minutes after. And you can see Gucci coming out right now. So you might be wondering, Sounds arduous, sounds like a lot of time, but surprisingly, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to take care of your hens. There is one task that you have to actually make sure you do every day, and that is checking for eggs. So why is it so important that you're collecting these eggs every single day? Well, if you let them pile up too much, one might break and then a chicken might take a poke at it and find that it actually really likes the taste of eggs. And once that happens, you've got an egg eater on your hand and it'll actively seek and destroy your eggs so that it could eat it. 
and it's really hard to break that habit. So make sure you're actually checking for eggs every single day. On a weekly or monthly basis, there's a few tasks that you'll need to do. I like to come in and just give their bedding a little bit of a turn just to get some of the debris out of the way. Don't even have to do this, but just keeps it a little bit more tidy for them. Don't need to do a full bedding change. Besides that, checking food and water and topping up if necessary, and then just going into the run and cleaning up any normal debris. If you are using the deep litter method like both me and Kevin are, every six months to a year, you're going to actually have to pull up all this bedding and get it out of here and replace it with new bedding. Now by that point, the bedding will probably be about this tall and most of it will have already started to compost. But there is something you can do with that bedding once you've cleaned it out. Once you've cleaned your bedding out, you can actually take it and make one of the most wonderful compost you've ever made. This was my previous bedding that I actually added here about six months ago and I've been building piles into it. So I've been adding greens and browns to get it nice and hot. And right now, after six months, it's so broken down, I'm actually amazed. I can't smell any manure whatsoever. It just smells like wonderful compost. This is going to be a killer addition to my garden this year. Something else that's not really a chore, it's actually one of the more fun parts of keeping hens is giving them treats. So we have some black soldier fly larvae here that they go nuts for. And this is a great way to build trust with your hens. You can connect with them. It's just a great little mental break throughout the day. And for me at least, it's really funny to see how vigorously they attack these treats. But to be honest with you, keeping hens isn't all fun and games. As amazing as chicken keeping can be, chickens are living animals and they do experience the occasional health issue. Some common ones are bumblefoot, mites, or lice. And so you have to either be careful either caring for them yourself or paying the bill to take them to the vet. One of the many reasons that egg prices are skyrocketing is the spread of avian flu. Due to the way that chickens are kept in egg production in very large scale, if one hen gets it, they actually have to kill the entire flock. Now, that's not probably gonna happen to your backyard chickens. It's somewhat rare to spread to a backyard flock, but you have to remember that diseases and loss can occur. The most recent upgrade I've made to the coop is adding this roof here to the enclosed run. And it's because we experienced possibly the worst thing we've ever had to deal with when it comes to keeping chickens. And that is after a very long rainstorm, everything was so wet that the chickens had nowhere to dust bathe and actually got mites and lice. It was one of the worst things I've ever experienced. We actually wore full body like Tyvek painting suits and we had to flip the chickens over in every orientation and dust them with a powder to kill off all those mites. All the meanwhile, the mites were just raining onto our suits, which is why we wore those full body protection. So just know that something like that can happen. And of course, if you're not willing to deal with it, you're going to have to take that chicken to the vet. Once you get to the point of actually deciding to get some chickens, you have three different options for how you're going to raise them. You can raise them from eggs, from baby chicks, or from mature pullets, which are chickens that are pretty much ready to go out into the coop and start laying shortly thereafter. There are many advantages of getting your chickens as baby chicks. That's actually what both myself and Kevin did. And the main advantage is that they actually get very comfortable around you. They get to trust you, they get to know your presence, and they actually start to recognize your voice. Whereas if you started with something like a pullet, it's not going to really get to know you very well from the beginning. They might be a little bit more skittish, a little bit more scared of your presence. And the biggest advantage, of course, over starting from an egg, is that you could get your baby chicks as what is called a sexed bird. That means that it is known that that chick is going to grow up to be a hen rather than a rooster, saving you with a huge headache. When it comes to chicken breeds, there's actually a lot to consider. First of all, you can get chickens that'll do better in a colder climate or maybe a warmer climate. Then there's my personal favorite way to choose, which is chicken temperament. Some are more aggressive, some are a bit more docile. Now, mixing a docile with an aggressive hen can sometimes mean that that docile hen gets picked on, like my poor Orpingtons right here tend to get a little picked on. But if you mix and match, you can still be okay. Then there's other factors like the egg color, egg laying amount, and then quite frankly, the overall flex factor of the aesthetics of the chicken. I mean, look at Rufio here. This is my cream leg bar, an absolutely beautiful hen through and through. When it comes to choosing the right chicken breeds, there are quite a lot out there. A couple good ones to get you started with are Orpingtons. Chirp right here is a buff Orpington. I also have the black copper Morans, which is absolutely wonderful. The Wyandots, Easter Egger, Rhode Island Red, and the Australorp. These are all chickens that are, have a good temperament. They're not going to be very fighty. They're going to actually want to bond with you. And they all lay at least 200 to 250 plus eggs a year. Now there are a few chicken myths or misconceptions to clear up. 
such as the breeds that Jacques mentioned. Those will lay somewhere around 200 eggs a year, which if you're counting means, yeah, you're not going to get an egg every single day of the year. Typically in the longer day periods, like spring and summer, you're gonna get consistent egg laying somewhere around every 24 to 26 hours, assuming the hens are young and healthy. And then in the winter, when the light levels get lower, egg production for some breeds can actually drop to zero. Then you have to consider the fact that as your hens age, their egg production also falls off. Years one to three are very vigorous, high producing years. And for a lot of breeds, years three, four, five, all the way through 10, which is how long a hen can live, can actually show you nearly no eggs at all. So you need to have a plan for when your chickens stop producing. One of the most common myths in the world of chicken keeping is that if you have chickens, your yard is going to stink. But I'm sitting right here next to my chicken coop, giving it a deep whiff, and I don't smell any signs of manure or droppings. Now, the reason why that is, is because it's a well-managed deep litter system. So really, if you set up your coop properly, you do all the right things like having deep litter, not going to really notice any smell whatsoever and if you do it's probably because it's time to change that bedding out one of the things i was worried about when i started thinking about chickens was how noisy they'd be i live in a suburban environment here in san diego i don't want to make my neighbors upset because i have these beautiful hens hanging around but to my surprise there's only three moments where they tend to be pretty loud number one is a good one if there's a predator around they will freak out i've had hawks fly over and the hens absolutely lose their mind, but that's almost a good alarm signal for you. Next, if they're squabbling or fighting, a lot of the times that can be solved by choosing the right breeds with great temperament that work well together, as well as giving them enough space so they don't, quite frankly, get annoyed by each other and start pecking at each other. The third is one that's a little bit more regular, and that's when they are doing their egg song, which is the squawking that happens before and during they are laying their eggs. So that'll happen typically in the morning, at least for me, and then it quiets down. So it's a very very small portion of the day. If you're worried about noise, you might be thinking that you actually need a rooster in order to produce eggs. That's not true at all. I can assure you that I got five eggs today and I have absolutely zero roosters. So the only time you actually need a rooster is if you want to produce a fertilized egg to reproduce from your flock. Many of you are watching this video because you're thinking about getting into chicken keeping because of the rising cost of eggs. So why don't we see if the math even checks out? First of all, the biggest expense is gonna be the coop. Whether you're DIYing it, that's an investment of time, or you're purchasing at 500 bucks all the way up to, like I said, can be $10,000 or more for a coop at the highest end. That's your biggest expense bar none. But then you have some things that you need to do. You need to provide them some areas to play, some toys, at least some method of watering. In this case, I have a rain barrel that goes to a water bar that has little watering nipples. It's a little bit on the fancier end. And then I have a semi-automatic chicken feeder. This is sort of a gravity fed feeder here. You need the basics, a coop, a watering system, and a feeder. When I first started off my chicken coop, this was the first feeder that I actually built, which was made using PVC pipe that was supposed to gravity feed down into this little trough and give them food. Now, it kind of worked. It didn't work that well. It's also just very small and crowded. So since then, I've upgraded to this Coopworks feeder, which has multiple ports, holds over 60 pounds of food, and means that I don't actually have to add food for well over a month. I've also actually upgraded my waterer to this guy, which doesn't leak whatsoever like my old one did and it has multiple ports at a good height for my chickens. So these are upfront investments, but they can save you so much time that it makes chicken keeping even easier. Speaking of chicken feed, here at Epic Gardening, we use Grubly Farms, who are the sponsor of today's video. In fact, both Jacques and myself have been using their products for about two years now. When our hens were just baby chicks, both Jacques and myself fed them little pecks, Grubly's all natural starter feed. And then as adults, their primary feed is fresh pecs, which comes in either a crumble or a pelletized form. My hens tend to prefer the crumbles, but yours might be different. Every morning, I make it a ritual to give my hens a little morning snack with Grubly's Hometown Harvest, which are actually oven dried grubs that have 50 times more calcium than mealworms. I don't know what it is about these things, but my hens lose their minds when they get a chance to snack on these. All of the Grubly Farms chicken feed products are made with the goal of reducing the impact that our pets have on the planet without sacrificing their health. Great eggs come from healthy, happy hens. So a mixture of garden scraps and products from Grubly Farms have been the perfect combination for us. So check out the link in the video description and thanks to Grubly for sponsoring the video. Let's break it down and look at just how much the food cost is into a dozen eggs. Call it a buck per pound of feed 
The average hen's gonna lay around 250 eggs a year. That's roughly 20 cents an egg or about $2.50 per dozen eggs. But remember, there are some fixed costs here too. There's the gear that feeds them, there's the coop, and then there's the fact that the hens actually don't lay consistently throughout their lifetime. So yeah, this is a simplistic, crude example, but you can start to see how affordable or not keeping chickens can be just for their eggs. Jacques, it turns out if you don't add up the costs, having chickens is definitely worth the money. <laughs> of course, we're not keeping chickens just to save money on eggs. We're keeping chickens for the joy that they bring and also the fact that you get these delicious, nutritious eggs. Yeah, I mean, the thing for me is I love having them around. Psychologically, they're an amazing creature Absolutely. to just have fun with, mess around with, brings a lot of joy to your life. Hard to price that into the equation, but then the eggs. The egg quality is so different. Chickens wanting to forage, that deep, dark yolk, the nutrient quality is just so much better. And the flavor is so much better. <laughs> I can't go back to store-bought eggs. I just won't even bother. I give some to my mom every so often. The epic mom comes home and, and raids the, the old egg holder. And then she's actually said she won't eat eggs anymore <laughs> unless it's from, from the yard. So hopefully you enjoyed this beginner's guide to chickens. If you want more chicken content specifically, head on over to Epic Homesteading. That is our homesteading sister site where Jacques and I and some friends mess around, have fun trying to live an urban homesteading lifestyle. Till next time, good luck in the garden, keep chickens and keep growing.